I'm going to show you an example of how to obtain astrometry, that is coordinates of an asteroid, using Atrometrica and the sky for windows. We'll take some images that we got from a CCD telescope combination the other night and load them into Astrometrica. And one of the things that's neat about this Astrometrica software is it allows you to blink the images so you can pretty quickly tell where the objects of interest are that are moving amongst the background stars. And there's our asteroid right there. And you can see that the center of the image is more like in this region. And those coordinates of the center of the image is something that we're going to want to know when we compare to a known catalog of stars to get the coordinates for the pixels on these images. So one of the ways we'll do that is we'll look at the header information and make sure we have a pretty good idea of when the time and date of the observation is. And we'll use the sky and set that time and location so that it's pretty close to when the image was taken. And then we'll load the minor planets into the sky for that date and time. That way we'll be able to pick the center of the image that will then allow us to get close to the coordinate solution for each image and put the coordinate grid on the images. So we'll center on the object. Get a field of view that's similar to our CCD camera. I think you can begin to see how that's sort of similar to our field of view here with the center of the image kind of being over here in this area. So that looks pretty good. And we're going to use those coordinates now in the set of images to do the pattern matching and create the coordinate grid. You can also use the coordinate lookup to get the coordinates of the object, but that's not necessarily the center of your image, as you saw. So we're going to try to make the center of the image a little better so that our search is a little easier. Sometimes this will match up just right. And more often than not, the blue squares are showing the stars. The yellow things are what it thinks it's matched. And of course, it's failed. But one of the saving graces is that you're allowed to do this by hand. And if you've got the coordinates picked out just right, um, you can sort of find your own pattern match. You can change the magnification by changing the focal length of the telescope. You can increase or decrease the number of stars you see with the magnitude. And you can apply rotation, as you see I'm doing here with the position angle. And I think you'll begin to see what we got going here in a minute when I get things lined up. So what we're trying to do is line up the known stellar positions from a catalog, which are the red circles with the stellar positions in the CCD image. Like so.
All right, that looks pretty good. It ought to do it for the rest of the images too using the solution. And you can see the results. The number of reference stars that it found and matched. Now you see a lot of yellow circles. It's got a good coordinate grid. And then the offset from the coordinates of the stellar images versus the uh, catalog. Now when you click in any image, it's going to bring up a analysis box that will allow you to say what this object is or what you think it is. And we know that that's the asteroid based on our blinking of the images. We'll accept that observation. Let's make sure that's what we think it is. Yeah. So there's the asteroid right there. So on the next image, use that guy right there. And now that we've done two of the images, we'll look at the log file and it creates a, a, a log file that's basically the type of report that you would send to the Minor Planet Center. You can see the two images and the coordinates of the asteroid are in the format with this header here just like the MPC likes. This will then update the trajectories for this object and add these observations to the Minor Planet Center and hopefully allow us to predict further out in time whether or not this asteroid is going to whack us and uh, cause humanity to uh, experience the fate of the dinosaurs. But because we're doing this astronomy, hopefully that won't happen.